It's happening folks, we are here, it's the gold medal matches for Windmill 2023, kicking you off with the women's division between Germany women and France women, myself Hannah Pendlebury alongside Charlotte Terrasson. Oh, this is shaping up to 
I think. And I am biased, Charlotte. Probably the best final of the day. What do we think? Oh, hell yeah. I totally agree. I've been waiting for that for not only two days, but for s one year. I mean, you know when Mills coming next year. You know that EUC is coming and preparation is needed so all these european national teams meeting at windmill and having germany facing france on final this is delightful i just can't wait for the game to start so excited yeah there is literally nowhere else we would rather be and of course for you too because you're joining us here on the live stream we'll be bringing you all of the finals action today but looking across the journey that these two teams have had to get themselves into the final. Clearly the pundits know the women's division exceptionally well because these two teams were seeded first and second in the original rankings that went, of course, into that Swiss draw format. So we had some uh, pretty big scoreline differences, but these two teams have faced each other before in this tournament, Charlotte. Indeed, and France took the win on Universe Point 13, 12, I guess Universe Point, maybe not, because it's a Swiss draw, so you never know. You're not finishing all games on a score. But anyway, tied game, 13, 12, so that would be a rematch and revenge, maybe, for Germany, who are most surely hungry for victory. And I think it's very nice to see those two teams facing each other, not only because it's preparation and we will see them again at EUC, but also because we haven't seen Germany yet. Uh, it is the first tournament where they are present, while France was in Limerick, but also at uh, Tom Cerny, and Tom Cerny apparently didn't go as planned for them. I mean. It's a preparation. They were not aiming for gold, but I think they were expecting to reach a bit higher podium. So here is the moment, windmill with a shot for the gold. Absolutely. Indeed, as you say, the French women had that success at the siege of Limerick early stages. So we see the uh, toss there and Herbie, of course, enjoying the scenes. We're a big fan of Herbie the elephant. He's unpacked the trunk. And back here with that lovely pink tutu. That just seems, it's a timeless look, the uh, tutu, tutu leotard. But, uh, but certainly, yep, this is the first public appearance we're getting of the German women. They've been playing some club for us. Jinx and Seagulls. But uh, yeah, definitely their first outing as a team together. Of course, we always have the... Uh, German roster looking very good and not always managing to ascend their way through championship brackets in the fashion we would expect. So actually, thank you for the correction, Christian Gaffney, with the details for you. It is a universe the other way around. We did have the Germans snag that one in front of the Germans, but sorry, the French even. But we're going to have some sideline interview from two of the players coming up with Marlin Müller who of course uh, had a fun time at the European Beach Ultimate Club Championships last weekend, and uh, Ali Mondio. So Stefan Rapazzo is ready and prepared to bring us that, but we'll, uh, we'll keep you guessing. Are you going to make any early calls? So thank you very much to Stefan Rapazzo and uh, bringing us some sideline interview 
pictures potentially not with the cleanest audio but we've uh, rearranged reconfigured our setup here for finals day in the stadium and this is our first of three finals so we sometimes sacrifice a little bit to bring you those bronze medal games but we are underway and it is the german women starting out on offense with the natural advantage the luck from winning that toss shall finding gerner and i'm sure you are on the edge of your seat already. We know this last one went down to the wire. Such an exciting women's division. Casual single grab for Gurner, who had her hands full of uh, beers for her teammates. Big shout out to the fact that Germany women were very present at the party last night, proving at Windmill they can do the double potentially, depending on the outcome of this game. But the true handler, Gurner von Stebut, dancing around in the back, but good marking from Petit Bon. So many matchups we're excited for. Binavis now. Commandingly turns around. Oh, it's an offhand dish for that reset. Spicy. Gurner, big flat low backhand, and that is going to be the first turnover. Trying to hit Inga Spanot, but unfortunately, an error for the Germans to start. Maybe a little rush decision on this one. I mean, could have been a really good option as well but they've been moving the disc pretty well a bit bit of pressure for sure as you're saying good defense on the handling but they managed to make the disc move pretty well Garner and Shaw doing a lot this jinx connection oh well the uh, bracketing didn't work out quite so beautifully there and what a hero attempt Lila Petitbon making good of that uh, errant throw as best she could but uh, one poor throw deserves another that one straight into the floor from Son but oh my goodness what and is topsy-turvy point what is going on Ole to Petit Bon was that inbounds not called good on the field the sideline like it Lele Petit Bon now looking around Baronton trying to make herself useful but a little bounce pass across Ooh, just this is great defensive stand from the Germans. Oh, it's a big ripper flick, and it's going to be picked out by Spanner. A, a decent amount of contact there. Is there a foul called? That's certainly a risky business throwing that shot over the top. Yeah, risky decision. There were a lot of bodies everywhere where the disc was supposed to land. I mean, whether it is dip back in the end zone or even in front like this last pass to the Sina was uh, surprising I couldn't understand who the disc was for because a lot of bodies were running in the same direction I think it was for Juliette Patron like there was a kind of you know separation she'd snuck away to the soft side of the end zone and certainly it was a zesty shot to try and get there but it was a little bit undercooked, you know, she was hanging out on that far side. It needed to be a little bit bigger of a shape. And there was the opportunity taken by Spanet, who, of course, was denied by a throwing error in the end zone, the other side of this pitch. But that will come back. Back in the hands of now. Front of the end zone for the break. Indeed, and this would be a really fun way to open it up. We had the last game on this showcase field, open up with a break. But we won't spoil the result if you want to watch that one back. Pass for Lambolet. The French happy to take their time. Petit bon. Oh, that's a lovely one. And oh, well, I'll tell you, you don't see that happen many times. Kia is being beaten up line, but Lambolet does it, and that's the first goal. And a break for France. Really quick move of the disc. Lambolet giving and going for the score. Beautiful start for France with a break straight away. And big love to all of you in the live chat and the uh, your consideration, your considerate feedback. Certainly we are working through our technical issues here. Was, uh, we've reconfigured our streams to bring you the maximum view, the best perspective, the drones, the cameras. We brought it all together for this pitch. So forgive us if occasionally we have some, uh, some minor hiccups as we roll through these gold medal matches. But we love you all. Thank you very much for being with us here. Put your 
opinions on this game, your thoughts, your excitement, your energy into that live chat. And certainly we do have some uh, extra bonus coverage for you. We have dual language commentary, Charlotte. We do. We have our lovely Katy Meisel and Foxy, as we call him, giving, providing us some German comments on our channel, also available for any German speaker who would rather hear it in German with the emotions of the German language. <laughs> I don't think German is known as a particularly emotional <laughs> language, Charlotte. But certainly, the, what? Way, <laughs> the way that the German women play ultimate can sometimes get our emotions going. Charlotte Schall there at the back, working alongside. Gerner. Pops it back. And of course, Anna Gerner on every team she plays with. Likes to have the, her hands around the frisbee, surveying the downfield. And you'll see her receive many give goes. Lovely strike upfield. Oh my goodness, oh. that is just racing away. Lucie Richard get left for dust by Anna Gurner. And that's much more like it a quick, clean hold for the O line of Germany. That was a really good gainer to finish with an up line on Anna Gurner who was suspiciously free and that wasn't a peak all along defense couldn't keep up great job we know she does a lot on the pitch we know her shining with jinx and also german national team world games last year always highlight machine and again proving why Indeed, giving us a little bit of sugar spice and all things nice. We've been lovingly saying that Gurner is like a blend of all three Powerpuff girls. Of course, a throwback for the old school crew, <laughs> 90s and noughties children's television. <laughs> Either way, it's, a, it's the highest of compliments possible. So a hold for the German women. But the France O-line coming out, and of course, Ali Mondiaux with that cheek black face paint. Pick call on the underneath. Fretigny picking a little bit of traffic, being matched up by Sophie Rompelt. Good to see Fretigny on the field. She tore her ankle a few weeks ago at the French Championship. Oh, oh wow, Chloe Valet. Unexpected. That disc just bops her on the head. Très bizarre. Well, an opportunity, golden opportunity, if you will. Mona Schack. Oh, Ingenarches with the big arm. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be blocked. Can it be caught underneath? <laughs> <laughs> she missed it all and closes the door. Not the tallest player, but my goodness. The ups of Rasta. Ali Mondieu. She's small, but she mighty. Amon Babikian, another mighty player, though. Oh. That's going to trail out of bounds. Such a difficult throw to execute, that same third huck. A lot of surprises on this line. I mean, Chloe Vallet dropping a disc that's very surprising because she usually always gets every fancy throws. She will always get her to close her hand on it and grab that disc. Here not. And also Mondia with the huck. Yeah. Out of bounds, that is surprising. One of the best throwers in the world, Ali Mondio, making curious life choices, but uh, a with relatively a short field, Jul Braxen. Braxen? Braxen? Oh, goodness gracious me, Hannah, I'm going to have to learn that one. But uh, we do have some newer faces on the German roster this season. Look out for number 61, Mila Rodolf, who's a uh, been playing on both the D and O lines for this tournament for Germany. Women, they, they're not sure why they like her best. <laughs> She's brand new, she first cap Seagulls player for German women this year. And that one indeed coming in on the front cone. Paxson. Lots of players flustering around the disc. It's just going to be a chuck Ooh. it in hope. Amar Babikian layering on the pressure. But <laughs> that one works out. Is that Volson with the uh, the layout score? Looks like it. We'll have to. Oh, no. It's, of, no of course it's not. Of course it's not Volson. It's the number 30. It's Mona Schack. 
doing Mona Shack things. Mona Shack getting a step in front of Babignan, uh, what is, yeah, Babignan, who we know showed us at Elite Invite that she got layouts if needed for the scores and also for the ones who followed the French Championship. She got that huge layout block on the universe point for Yaka to take the win over RFO girls. So pay attention when she's defending on you, she might just steal the disc in front of you. But here Shaq was absolutely not scared and got her hands first on this one, giving and providing the layout needed for this amazing break from Germany to come back with the advantage they were supposed to start with. Well, two of the best O-lines in all of European Women's Ultimate Frisbee and both of them broken on their first attempt. So, Maldio, everything back on. So, Valle, she's lost the cap <laughs> after that early one where the dish, disc boshed her on the heads with a rare drop from the lengthy athlete, the number 28 for France. Ali Mondio, big arm opened. Far side, Chatrin. Colleen Chatrin uh, puts a disc up of her own and a little bit of backpedaling is all that's required of Chloe Vallée going up strong and clutching the second French goal of this match. So all Beautiful. lined up at twos. Beautiful. Oh, here it is, a clean hold that we're expecting from both sides. Only stars on these teams. I mean, very high level players. Pressure is big on defense, but I mean, these O-line players are, as you were saying, part of the best in Europe. Very steady players, secure, patient, all the, um, not talents, but... Uh, yeah, to tennis you need to be a good online player. Competences. Well, this game is indeed looking close. It's been a bit grindy. We had that long first break, with three turnovers, and the same for the second break. All on serve. But if you are enjoying this game, do us a favour. Smack that like button. <laughs> hit your thumb. Hit the thumb. There's, there's there's a little under, under, if you're watching this on a desktop, it's underneath where you'll, you'll see the picture in the screen. But please like this game, put that thumbs up, get in the chat, because we want as many people to be able to see this spicy women's gold medal match here at Windmill. Isolation play for Vinovus. So we reach midfield. A little bit of a slowdown now, asking one stable to get active in that deep, not deep space, and the space. Now Gerner. Van Schlebut doing a great job in the handling, very fast feet. Indeed. And obviously Gerner shall do. Van Stabert coming under, oh, there's a little look there from Petit Bon, trying to sneak into the cookie jar and steal a biscuit away. Binavis has Gerner just committing to that up space. Charlotte Schall recycling through. Oh, that's such a lovely break. There's a little bit of a hop required from Gerner, but what a powerful flick inside break that was from Schall. Lovely look and even better execution. That was a perfect inside to get straight in the hand, as you said, with a little hop mm -hmm. from Gerner, but that is minor effort when you know what kind of effort you can sometimes have to put laying out and so a little hop I think is pretty okay Absolutely. decent very much <laughs> in the area we've seen Gerner lay out for you know some of the high pressured swing passes in previous iterations but you can see there the defender just gives up no she's been a little bit undone by some fancy footwork from Gerner so all calm in this game now some steady trades And here we are. A lovely line with a lot of Yaka Chak faces. We only have one external, not part of those two teams on the O line right now. Oh, 
Mondio, low one, oh. rising high and just too much mustard on that. The attempt was there, Fretinier fretting a little bit on that one, Rumpelt. Lovely lead pass to Volosum. Fakes the high release, pops it back to Nahis, who was doing fabulous work on the dance floor yesterday evening. And of course, that is what windmill is about. High level, ultimate, high level passing. Sophie Grumpel with a casual one handed grab. Just shy of the end zone. This to, to make a statement in this game. A second break of score after conceding the first goal and giving away that initial advantage from virtue of winning the toss. Awesome. Doesn't like the first continuation, but that one's going to sail too high. Oh. <laughs> Ali Mondio. Always Match there. It was meant for Ian Ahes. Oh, yes. Always there when you need her. I'm on Bobby Kian. With Chuck on the mark. Those two matching up once more. Mon Dieu. To Chatrin. No one really making many moves downfield. Now bouncing underneath. But store count starting to really rise and a big foul accepted <laughs> by Ingenares. They were t very tight marking, but you know, fair battle. That was, but actually, I think that if that disc was released, that there was the two other players running through in that direction who would have stopped it. And other players, I mean, the duo Shaq, Babikan again together. Ooh. Feisty shirts, that's not Elise Becker, that's Aurore Langlois, who's yet to get her kit order sorted for France women, playing in Becker's shirt. Of course, Becker not on this team due to injury. That's a huge break around, not caught in bounds, nothing that Nanu Leborn can do. But good spirit to know that, you know, that one was a bit too much of a risky bit. That was, I mean, good look on the break side, but too out of bounds, even with a tiptoe you just cannot keep it in bounds maybe she could have gone for the greatest but Ooh. i mean that was a peak so that would be so frustrating to get a successful greatest and not and have to give it back i mean who cares you're on a live stream we're recording this for the ages <laughs> but that one is going to be pushed out True. of bounds a bit of a uh, throw to perhaps some coverage didn't look like sophie Rumpelt was the most free on that one but another squandered defensive opportunity here for the d-line of germany women Good race up line. All oh, the arm flail underneath it. But Fretinier, calm, cool, and collecting. Mondio, it's another big one from the same third, and it's blocked out of bounds. We see lots of people come undone by not catching their Ds, but Mona Schack saying, hey, this is how you get a Mac block. The German defense is impressive. They are putting up such a pressure you can if you're looking at the cutters they are really struggling to get free from these dark jerseys and most of the the throws are actually on the break side because cutters are struggling i think so i actually think we should see more small ball activity from the airline of the french if you look at the stature differences between a lot of the matchups here so do some smart bracketing there on the rumpelt's initial cut be nice to see them not quite throw so many long high passes allow the Germans to kind of swat mm. away as we just saw that one before. This is lovely movement. Florentin Raffenberg. Oh, a little bubble oh. one and the clap catch again. Mondio cleaning up those German D-line errors. It's a shot into the end zone, oh. but it's, <laughs> gonna, it's almost like just what these teams easy. want to do is create a super team. They actually play with each other rather than against each other. That's what it feels like right now. That was a bit too hasty. I don't know what. Why so bladey? That look was so good with Colin Chartrain giving a nice upline cut, and we've seen Alain Mondios throwing this very well earlier. Oh, the Germans trying to connect again with Sophie Krumpelt, and then again, not quite the nicest throw. For those of you who are not familiar with Charlotte's gorgeous accent, she's saying the word hasty. 
Hey, Steve. I love your pronunciation of it. Though. It makes me think of pasties in the UK, <laughs> which are, of course, a delicious gourmet snack. Mm, yummy. Well, gourmet, she says. For the UK. Bobby Kian. Feisty, fiery flick into the end zone. And at long last, we get a conclusion to this point. Fretinier with the goal, but that had quite a few turnovers, to say the least. That had eight changes of possession, Charlotte. A few ones, <laughs> let's say. Yeah, and quick ones. I mean, we've had, like, turnovers just continuing. And, um, oh, how do you say that? Following each other one after each other, but um, great pressure. I mean, the pressure from the D-line of Germany was impressive, but every time France lost it, they managed to retrieve it. Good work from the O-line, who can apparently also defense, which is a strength you need also on O-line sometimes, especially in women division, where we will see more often turnovers, which doesn't mean you won't score your offense. Well, at the moment, many of the players out here on the pitch are uh, giving as much as they are taking away in this game. Looking at the stats line for Rasta, Ali Mondieu, three blocks, <laughs> but also three turnovers. So hopefully she can change her ratios for the better. I mean, this e equalizes and goes back to zero. I think it's fair. You can turn <laughs> over the disc if you get the defense afterwards. Precisely. That's the deal. Precisely, Charlotte. <laughs> So, fielding the pool, Charlotte Schall, Charlotte de Schall. And of course, there's a very bouncy pitch surface underneath us. 4G rubber crumb for you turf fans, <laughs> you weirdos. Because <laughs> of course, the best sand is definitely beach. The best surface is beach. Although there's sand in some of the uh, oh, artificial pitches annoying. here. It's weird, <laughs> it's weird. But of course, we delight to be at Wimmer with so many opportunities to play games. Spanot with a little bit of an undercooked pass, trying to be scooped up by Von Stebut. That would have been a hero catch for sure. So unfortunate. Again, the same kind of errors while the motion was amazing. Well, it's a French Sani down the other side of it. A big pack coming together and a foul call. I don't particularly like that one. I like having the call, having the moment to discuss it, but I would be quite happy to see that one called a turnover. But let's have a look at a replay, shall we? Yeah, let's have a look. Because my opinion matters not one iota. <laughs> not at all. But I also think that was a pretty nice defense. But we're pretty far from the action as well, so let's have a look. Mm, there are some arms on top of the other. But well, it's, it's a difficult one because obviously Kio Binavis underneath that sort of pack of players. Um, and it is, it is going to be retracted. I like that. Have the discussion, have a talk about it. And afterwards, the agreement. Great spirit. So again, let's see this nice giving and going from the O-line from Germany. Yep, plenty of space being given for the handlers to dominate. We certainly see a lot of these German teams playing handler-dominated sets. Spanut coming underneath, inside to Benavis. Amazing insight again from Schall. Casual, high-level footwork from Gerda on the far sideline, just keeping it in. Oh, lovely fade on that flick. Throwing in the space, the best move. Stebut coming through. Had herself a heckin' time back at the Elite Invite, playing, of course, with Jinx. Really dominant defender, of course, being used on this German O-line. Kia Bidavis trying to turn on the Jets, very well defended by Bocanegra Gomez. This is just really lovely patience. How many more passes to unlock the oh! door? The bid is there, but the disc is just out of reach. So sad. I mean, Hambrecht went full extension, really used all the length of her body, but that was just not enough to get a hand. Yeah, Charlotte Chachal there with the error. There was nothing more you could have asked from Hambrecht. Big bomb into the deep space. The pack now assembling underneath it. Gurner with the block. Fabulous defense. Pauline Rigolet, a very experienced athlete with a fantastic read, but uh, 
solid box out from the German Gurner. Still rising Kia Benavides to the far side. A fantastic athlete who had, I believe, a, an owner of a sneaky COVID baby using that off season that we none of us wanted or needed. Oh my goodness, Anna Gurner racing deep. <laughs> oh, that was such an obvious point. You didn't need to wait for her to get her hand on it. That was sure. I mean, either she will speed up and get the disc or lay out if needed, but that was for sure going to be a score. Beautiful pull from, uh, from Charles who got totally free, had the whole space to throw whatever she wanted. And Garner speeding up, putting some leg work and getting a score. All line from Germany scoring for to get three, uh, four points on the scoreboard, for and three for France. Indeed, we are trading in this first half, attack and counter attack, call and response from the German and French women's teams. Who, of course, will be seeing each other in a couple of weeks' time. I'm sure, probably on a similar stage to this, in Limerick. Oh yeah. And we will be bringing you that coverage, of course hard-working Ulti TV crew tendering for every contract we possibly can. So, Paul landing about a third in, nearly at that break mark, but just off it to the side. Chartrain looking around. Mondio nearly some friendly fire, but keeps the disc close to the chest. Vallée. Oh, she's got the hat back on. <laughs> oh, oh, nearly the run through Mückstein. <laughs> Turning on the Jets to try and best Amand Babikian. Definitely two players that are worthy matchup. Valet now. Wilson. Babikian. In our stuff. Oh, again. <laughs> Hot defense, the pressure is rising, and oh. the two players trying to squeeze through their end zone. Again, Le Bon not quite able to connect with the pass. That one looked a little bit, as you say, hasty or hasty. <laughs> hasty! <laughs> <laughs> it's the <A>. too, <laughs> a little too far for Le Bon to get that one again. There haven't been very nice on the throws to her, <laughs> these last points. So, so here comes the break. Well, possibly. We've possibly. seen a lot of uh, break opportunities squandered in this match yeah. so far. Nahis now. Nice high backhand pass. Lots of people have to go really high to uh, execute over the shoulder of the mark but Ingenahis of course doesn't have to throw that high yeah that was risky Colin Chartrain was having an eye on this one but big bodies from Germany got it before securing it still in possession getting closer to the end zone but slowly they seem to be struggling a bit well that's a nice bit of expansive play hitting Nahis over there with fabulous handler defense Germany women being pushed underneath quite a lot, although now a compressed field. It's going to be fairer matchups on this defense. Person coverage, the name of the game. Oh, cheeky hammer oh. over the top. Doesn't connect, though. Anna Shepard trying to come underneath for that. But that was fabulous handler marking. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Still rising and pressure getting even higher on all the dumps. Trying to get free on our plan around whatever French girls were here. So the women of France, Chatrain, San Marco, Valet, or Amon Babicar threatening that offside on the pitch, that break opportunity. Of course, this is not a break in school, but are they going to score on the break side or the open? Hammer over the top, <laughs> Babicar. Mondio show, showing how it's done. Absolutely, that is how you throw a hammer. It's a Mondio classic. Amon Babikian with a little jump. Oh, oh, oh Ingenahes laying out just not quite in the end zone. Fratinier 
pop through and there we go from behind the back of the mark Amand Babikian with a little jump in for the score very nice to see the all line fighting to retrieve the disc showing that this is their points even though you might have turns just get the disc back put the pressure needed as they've been doing and I mean the German all line as well both all lines have been showing that they can defend as well and I mean the D-lines have been doing also pretty good offense since we had breaks on both sides, at least one break. Well, uh, yeah. At the moment, looking at the stats of this game indeed, we have had zero perfect conversions for the French D-line and zero perfect conversions for the German D-line. So it's all been a kind of, you know, a game of trading possession but certainly it we like these close games that's what we want we want these galaxy points these universe points and it's only the first final <laughs> indeed we've got two more even after this one oh yes oh, and he's oh, with yes. a layout <laughs> <laughs> Alice Fonciet or Fiancet 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 <laughs> On set. What a great look and execution with the layout defense. Salome Rollet now bringing us back in. Huge layouts. Can they now contain the fire? Lamboule, which, if you're watching with the uh, auto generated captions, apparently translates to lamb belly. Give you a little bit of a, a laugh here in the booth. High one, but well kept. Lamboule. Again, not too much action coming <laughs> from the stack. A little bit high stall. Yeah, pretty still stack. Petit bon. Waiting for the opportunity. Staring at the <laughs> handler and just throwing a sky ball. And of course, who's hands to it landing? It's Anna Gerner. You don't want to throw these high releases, floaty pads, when Gerner is around. I mean, it's better than getting stalled out, let's be honest. But yeah. It is, it is. And, and uh, to be fair, I have become an extremely big fan of the high release flicks of the French women. Their semi final. Oh, oh my goodness. Just absolutely <laughs> sensational. Those elevator flicks, especially in the end zone to try and hit that break side. Kia Benivis with the pop fakes and throws the pop eventually to Gerner. Laser chuck of that forehand. Charles sending the mark spinning around. Oh, oh and a slicer oh. into the end zone. Oh. Followed through Von Stuber with the attention. Oh, that wasn't quite in. Just let me come for you, my love. Over to that side of the end zone. Perfect. What a footwork. That was some Gurner dancing in front of the end zone celebrating in advance oh my what a cut and that's a break no is it a hold no it is a hold there we go hold i was just wondering in my head i was like surely that's got to be just a hold has my internet updated my stats yet but fiancet oh my holy moly that was such a lovely layout and again a replay on this last uh, before last shot, jumping, trying to get it inbound, just not so push pass to finish the work. Well, continuing to trade one break each in this break. So the French women once more out on the pitch. We haven't had any clean holds for quite a while since we had the Germans notching us up to 3-2. Fabikian putting one out of bounds. Fabikian is such a committed athlete. She actually Jeez. doesn't always understand when her team has won a game on a live stream. Uh, elite invite, we went and chat chatted to her. And she, uh, she actually thought they'd lost a game that they'd won because she's just <laughs> such a committed, committed individual. She's like, I have to play better. I have to play better. And at such a young age, that's such a fantastic mentality to have. 
Yeah, these are precious young talents and you will get more of her content this season and for the next ones coming. Right, with a huge backhand fake, sending San Marco flying down the pitch. Has a shot through. Against strong defense on the dumps. Absolutely. Well, this, I think this is the, the strategy for both sides, is to really push pressure and squeeze the handlers. Don't allow that reset, really make you have to work for it. And climbing the ladder, Verena Volsum. Casual toss to Rumpelt, Frey now. Laser inside, great attack from Monashak. Closing the door almost in the face of Ali Mondio. You can see how hard the athletes are cutting right now because every time they catch, it seems like they blow the air out of their cheeks like hamsters. Of course, though, hamsters have full cheeks because they're carrying food and it's going to be a lot of fuel for the fire. No, wow. Volison, not quite there. She l l sort of got the body low, ready to make that explosive bid forward, but just realized that the disc was out of contention. She's too far. But I want to give a shout out again to Shaq for this extra step she gives always towards the disc to prevent these defenses that are very close and still get possession of the disc. San Marco, Sorry. underneath. Oh, <laughs> what a fantastic battle that is! Nanu and Ingenahis. And that was called out of bounds. Not quite the fancy footwork. Perfect for Ojo Langlois. Yeah, too far, but she tried to give the best. Shaq losing no time. Very aggressive play. Oh, she's a feisty player, Mona Shaq. Narges now. The seagull opening up the wings to throw one oh. into the end zone. <laughs> and it's a battle won by Verena Velossen. And that's a break for Germany women. Babi can always there fighting, but the disc just too high. Germans know it that they have longer, bigger bodies, I guess, and use this height because French legs are going fast and they're going to take the steps in front of the German players if needed. So... Very good adaptation from the Germans for the break, as you said. 6-4. Start getting a little gap in the scores. And Verena Volosen that I believe of DC Shadow, formerly. Maybe you can let us know in the comments. As the stands start to fill, of course, the previous games today on our live stream didn't have the full crowds because other athletes were around playing their final placement games here. And it is a delight, as always, to be at Windmill. Oh, yes. If you're missing this event, FOMO must be hitting hard. It, it really does. And I can speak from personal experience on that front, Charlotte. I decided not to attend last year's iteration of Windmill. I had too much serious Frisbee to go and play, not enough free weekends, and I was gutted and regretting it the whole Same. time. <laughs> so, Vale. Move through. Thanks, Vale. Oh, oh! <laughs> how did she catch that over the top of Shaq? I am shocked at the abilities of Chatrin. That one thrown under heaps of pressure. Goodness gracious, the Mark Mira Prodauf. One of the coaches, uh, Marco Müller of this Germany women's side was saying she'd been an absolute dynamite find for Germany women this season and taking yeah. matchups like Aline Mondio, you can see why. Crazy stuff happening on the pitch in front of us. Oh. Well, ticket to the break train. Oh, Anna Gern has got <laughs> one. <laughs> and a little celebration with the bow. Inga Spanik collecting that absolute dime of a throw from that, Anna Gerner. Oh. That was ridiculously perfect. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> what a shot. Well, enough said. Ridiculous perfection here on this women's final. And the timeout being called surely by French women. Three on the bounce for Team Germany. We're going to take a break here in the booth, but don't go anywhere. More of the action after these messages.
back in the action here and this could be the closing point of the first half of this game we had such grindy trading charlotte and then we have a clean break our first of the game to take it to seven four for the german women french yeah. fans goodness germans really stepped up and put the pressure on defense and didn't lose the disc after getting a turnover well, maybe we'll get a bit of power of the nutmeg there for Aline Mondieu as she tries to fill the pool. And of course, that one rolling through her legs. Nice bit of movement from Barantin, who was devastating in the semi-final over the Czech women. Valet underneath it with Bavikian. Doesn't really <laughs> matter who caught it of the two of you. Amand probably no! not. <gasps> Chloe Valet, no. There was the miscommunication between the players after both getting a hand on the disc. They couldn't just complete it. Whoa, that was something very strange indeed. Well, you could see the frustration apparent on Valo's face. Watch out for her. I have a feeling she might get a block, but we'll see. Shepard. This to take half in dominant fashion. Oh, Amand Babikian says no, oh. scoops it out of the literal lap of her matchup. Sky, Chatrin. Green Chatrin looking for options, has Le Bon in the back of the end zone, and a long last. The French women connect with one of their favorites to keep a little bit more action in this first half. Of course, we have full 15 point score cap. We have two timeouts per team during whatever part of the game you want, apart from after the caps expired. And we fought, Charlotte, to make sure we get a plus one cap on these games. This time, yes, we do get a plus one cap no matter of the score, these are finals, not the same as for the other games. Good replay on they need the to score. Right Colin Chartrain for the assist to Nanu, as we know her, Anne Le Bourne, who finally gets a clean shot to her and not out of bounds for her to provide the assist to the team. The one-eyed girl from France. She's not really one-eyed, but <laughs> Le Bourne <laughs> means one-eyed in French. It does, it does. But I she does use both eyes to see, clearly. <laughs> what's, the, what's the word for that? There's a word for someone who's got one eye. Okay, myth I mythical Googled legend it and that was a one Cyclops. <laughs> there we go. Oh, a cyclops. cycloptic action Wait, from Nanu. Cyclop, do, don't they have one eye in the middle of the face? That is something more, I would say more pirate-like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> let's, let's avert our course of commentary back to the action here on the pitch. Gurner in the center looking for options, trying to isolate Benavis, but coming oh. underneath that one and getting sailed over Annika Hambrecht. Could this be the break opportunity for France? I wouldn't be mad if it is because we want the tightest game possible. Salome oui. casual dish back to Barenton. Those young French tall athletes, Bocanegra Gomez trying to read that one. No. Oh, and it just bounces out of her hands. That is the break bouncing out of her hands. This is just bonkers, Charlotte. Absolutely bonkers. It's like someone has applied some kind of slippery lubrication to the palms <laughs> of the French women. I've never seen them have this many execution errors just on sort of what should be clean catches for these elite athletes. I mean, the boxing hour was perfect from Indeed, Boga did Negra, but... Literally did everything else right. Oh, beautiful outside break. And up. No. Oh, not quite enough communication from the sideline for Bertrand. Got a little bit lost. Gana. I wanted to scream, but I have a mic on. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a mute button. You could do it. <laughs> <laughs> you would hear it on the other mic. <laughs> uh, that is true. You do have a powerful vocal cord set. So, Charles 
Looking around, high release over the shoulder of the mark and a Ooh. quick pop in. This one makes it. Handbrecht with the goal. Oh, you know, is that Handbrecht? This is half. And that is indeed half, regardless of who it was that got. Yeah, it was Annika Handbrecht. There we go. Looked for a minute like that six was an eight. So half taken by Germany women. This one went to Universe in the earlier stages of the tournament between these two and the German women snagged the victory there. But can they do it with a bit more air between them and their opponents this time? Oh, well, we're going to keep you waiting for a little bit longer than we normally do in an ultimate finals game because we're, of course, at Windmill and we have some sideshow entertainment for you oh. in the midst of these finals. So for the women's, we're going to have the open pulling competition. So the format to do that is uh, we'll get you the ad first, but we'll bring in the halftime action after this advert. And that was France's chance to break here, but they did not connect. Thanks for watching and enjoy. Buy some Tokai cleats.
So we're going to do some casual commentating of the pole competition as the stands go wild. That went through the uprights. <laughs> All right. Are we playing rugby or frisbee here? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Norwegians are in the stands behind us, getting very, very energized by this <laughs> open pool competition. What a high for Norway! Not used to see them that often, but a pleasure having this kind of vibe. Definitely feeding the windmill vibe. So to recenter and steady ourselves, we are in the midst of it in the women's gold medal match. Finals day here at Windmill Tournament 2023. Myself, Hannah Penderbury, on the comms alongside Charlotte Terrasson. And at the moment, oh my, the fans of Germany, of which many are our patrons, big shout out to all of our German family over in Deutschland. We love all of you and all of our other patrons. You don't have to be a German patron for us to love you. You just have to be a patron. Of course, these live streams brought to you in part by tournament budgets, but also by the love of the people. We also have some sponsors and some patrons who are not ultimate players. We have patron muggles amongst us, Charlotte. Patrons what? Tra patron muggles. It's that like jargon thing of we lovingly refer to people that don't play Ultimate as muggles, oh. a la Harry Potter, because we're all a bunch of nerds. Oh. I mean, not all of us, but most of us. I'm a player. <laughs> no, no, but we have, we have patrons that don't play Ultimate. That's how this cool our coverage is. And I think this is amazing. Thank you all, because usually, yeah, we get a lot of players themselves because they are in it and they know what it means and they like to follow. But having non-players, this is exactly what we're aiming for. So you are precious to us. Thanks for following us, for being part of this journey, adventure of Ulti TV and get your friends as well to help us to discover what an amazing sport Ultimate is. I mean, just bring someone to one tournament and tell me they don't want to keep playing or being part of this. I mean, we also have some non-players among us and they are just delighted to be part of this tournament flow everything the vibe and community that we have in ultimate absolutely massive shout out to pierre working tirelessly in our ulti tv crew this is second ever frisbee event he joined us at tom's tourney earlier this season and he uh, liked it so much he came back for windmill because this is his hometown uh, dutch what man himself to, what a way to enter the ultimate world i mean tom's tourney and windmill that is freaking cool. I know, mate. He might have peaked. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> but the other things you can do, of course, which cost zero pounds and zero pence or zero euros and zero cents, since we're on mainland soil here, you can hit zero subscribe. Pranks. You can like this game. I see so many of you watching this. I see you, nearly 600 of you live watching this. Hit that like button. I have 36 likes here. There's a thumb. Find the thumb. Whatever device, whatever platform you're watching on, click that little thumbs up button. Push us up the algorithms. Up the algorithms. Up the lasses. <laughs> We're having a ball out here. Windmill 2023 women's finals. Looking like they're about to get back underway. We have 90 minute time slots. And cap plus one regardless of the score difference. So not like in previous iterations of Windmill where there have been the eventual losers scoring that last point, which doesn't create that glory moment, right? We fought for it. We convinced the tournament directorship that we needed a cap plus one They'll have 10 minutes to do it at the end of this game. Unless, of course, either team can score 15 points. I think, I think this is pretty fair. What a bigger frustration than being happy at the end of the game because the other team scored, but you are the winner? That doesn't sound right. You have to be scoring that one, the whole team joining the score. Hugging, celebrating, this is the vibe of the winners. So, here is the K plus one. 
to give you this feeling, this moment for the fans, for the team and back in the game. Well, we see you in the comments. We are going to get our audio back on track, getting our dulcet tones silky smooth, having been hydrated by some of the local refreshments last night at the party, which, of course, at Windmill is a fantastic affair. Valet trotting into the deep space. It's going to be an arcing shot over the stop. Oh. Paul Dalf can't do anything about that one. And it's a beautiful oh. catch. Chloe Valet steadying the ship for, for France women. That is some Chloe Valley content. That's what we're talking about and why we're so surprised of the errors previously seen. This is the type of ultimate she provides us, always getting big to reach for the skies and get the hand on the disc. One-handed, no problem. She will have everything and score this first point after the s starting the second half. And 8-6, still in advantage of the German girls. Yeah, five passes required to do it. So a pretty swift point for the French women, as you say, Valet ascending up with that one-handed grab. Got a big old wingspan. And certainly a player that was uh, pretty pivotal in that victory over the Czech Republic in semi-finals on our live stream. That was quite the game. Very close, very tight. So there were some errors early doors, I think, in that game, if my memory serves. But then we traded for quite some time. We have in the comments Gerner being <laughs> compared to Jokic. Uh, Nikola Jokic from the NBA having apparently similar stats. <laughs> and effectively working. Yeah, indeed. Gerner with three assists, three goals and two blocks. This is some... Hi, sir, MVP stats. We need to start getting some uh, weird jargon for Frisbee stats. That is a beautiful put from Charlotte Schauer. Inga Spallett running it down. Please do bear with us, folks. We are working on our audio issues. We will try and fix them for you. We are cognizant of it. But we will keep the energy high here in the booth, even if it's chippy, chippy, choppy. Trying to get keep the energy as high as this German team, really hyped of the results, of the efficiency with which they are playing. Amazing job, 9-6 for Germany. Steady O-line, powerful D-line, amazing. And France also doing a great job, but just trying to give this extra energy, this extra work they will need to for breaking as did the Germans. Well, there have been so many opportunities for the D-Learn of the French women to get breaks in this game. They got that first break of score to open us up in this women's gold medal match, but they have had quite the number of opportunities and each way that O-Line of the German women's squad has been dynamite at getting turns back perhaps a little bit of looseness from the defensive outfit. So some things to work on as they, of course, set their eyes on Limerick. But in the way at the moment, dangling on a string in front of both these teams is a windmill gold medal for the taking. Oh, yes. Raimondo has Babikian sort of casually jogging around. We know when she turns on the Jets, she can get miles free. Oh, yeah, look at that form. Just bouncing straight back off the turf. Come on, Babikian. One more of these crazy layouts from Babikian, making it look casual. I mean, for her, that was pretty casual. It does. <laughs> Mon Dieu. Looking for options. They do need to be picture perfect in this second half and put the, the reliance on that D-line to convert the opportunities. Because at the moment, this looks like it might all go the way of the Germans. And that one sails past. And Cecile Fretigny. Not sure for who this one was. Not sure it was for Anse Fretigny. But oh, we got a little look at the drone footage there. I thought we were going to get the whole replay of the year. Uh, so we could figure out maybe if there was an option we didn't see on the pitch. We tease you. We tease you, Ultimate fans. But now his with her claws around the disc. We say claws, of course, because I believe that's what you call 
when a bird, you know, eagles have oh. claws. But I'll tell you what, someone put a, uh, a claw out there. Chloe Valet getting the block. And winning a short field opportunity. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Absolutely lovely. Fretigné, Liz Fretigné, collecting her first goal of the game. That was absolutely not the throw I was expecting to get out of the hands of LeBron. And it's actually even better than what I thought. I thought she would go like for a straight throw directly to the hands of the player, but instead threw a lovely outside to get around the defense, just making sure it's way out of the range of the defense. No layout opportunity, nothing, just a white shirt going to the disc. We have seen a fair few errors coming out of the French women when they, as you say, throw those laser passes. You know, we've seen some moments where what at any other day for the French woman would be a secured catch, but a little bit too much pace on the disc seems to be what's causing them issues. But yeah, exactly. Put it out, put it on the more secure side, doing the work with the disc rather than the legs. Floaty enough for your teammate to get it, but just not enough for the defense to get there. So defense coming under. Trying to nullify the domination of the German handler set. Everyone sort of jogging around, but Gerner moving, sauntering. Again, everyone's just sort of stopping on the field, just letting Gerner and Charles go to work, but she jumps that one oh. out of bounds, gets bested by the collection of lines on this showcase pitch. Not the first time we've seen that on the live stream. Absolutely not. We always have problems with lines because there are many sports players on this field, so lines everywhere, which can be very confusing, especially when they all have the same color. Big shot for the French D-line. La Petit Bon on the far side. Just squeezing it in bounds. Parentin. Looking for the dump, no option to be seen. Big around, just out of range. Parentin, defense, defense. difficult athlete to... Uh, <laughs> who are you favoring here? I know you're favoring the French because they're behind Charlotte. Because I want to play with them this year. <laughs> I'm injured, but definitely trying out next year. Indeed. Once they boot. Popping back. Oh, Gurner's going to have to Ooh. just recover on that one. Does so. Big pressure from Dabin, who got the mission to get, to block some of the flow of Gurner, which is not an easy one. It feels like someone's wheeled an anesthesiologist onto the pitch right now because this is a very low energy point for the German women and the block is going to be found trying to root one it to Gurner but Bertrand with the vision this time she looked up and saw the disc maybe the sideline was a bit louder since the unfortunate no communication before that could have been a very easy defense made up for that one and got the defense right in the end zone Pussy Bon really trying to grind to get away oh. from Charles. <laughs> oh my word. Well, it's just a chuck it in hope. Sailing perfectly oh. though. Lady Luck smiling upon the French women at long last. Bertrand, a little bit lost for options. Hassalomé Rolay going up that line, but it's just going to escape the grasp of Rigolet. What a huge pressure from the German defense I mean French girls are really struggling to get free and get a dump well this has been really the name of the game so far there have been opportunities given to the <laughs> French D-line but it's just the high quality defense the counter attack of the German women when they do find themselves wrong-footed it's just so huge 
Paul Bao finding Sha Shao. Low one for Kyo. I say that, it's a clap catch right in the bread basket. What do I know? <laughs> Looking for the give goes. This is much better. Again, Germany women just relying on those near side players. Got a pick from the stack. Coach Müller giving some voice from the sideline. Oh. Von Stewart to Gerner. Jinxy connections. And of course, we have some Jogo we love as well out here on the pitch. Spanut. Lead pass oh. for Gerner. <laughs> Not many of those are going to be taken out of her way. Daban had a little look at it. Chose not to make the play. Petitbon chasing Charles down. Oh, that's oh. going to be the error generated, though. Charles trying to release in flow and just not quite the right execution. I mean, they cannot all be perfect. This is a pretty hard throw, and she already provided a lot of them perfectly thrown. So we can give her that one. So a timeout being taken on the pitch. We will give ourselves a break here in the booth, but do not go anywhere. The women's gold medal match will continue after this. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. Women's finals here. In Windmill Edition 2023, Hannah Pendlebury in the booth, getting funky alongside Charlotte Terrasson. We've got music, we have refreshment, we have fans in the stands who I believe are going to start doing a crowd wave. No, they're doing stretching. All right, let's get involved in this. Stretching after a tournament. That's a really good game for the crowd. <laughs> All right. See if we can do it in line with the, the fans in the stands. You at home, get out of your seats, get off of your sofa. Or if you're in public, stretch anyway. Stretching's very good. Flexibility and mobility are key to athletic peak performance. You can't be fast if you're not flexible. So I hear. And someone who's got a lot of knowledge about being flexible, Charlotte Terrison. Being flexible? All the physio you're doing. Oh. Is yes, but flexibility absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a boring part. Well, back to the game and France with the offense. Barton, curvy bladey flick over the top, perfectly weighted for Pauline Rigolier. She puts up a bit of a sky ball, but the clutch Ooh. grab coming through Lambolet. Rigolier playing the game of know your receiver. Knows exactly what she's capable of. Oh my goodness, that's such oh. a nice release. A high backhand into the end zone. <laughs> and Charlotte, we have another French break. We do. <laughs> what a fancy throw from Rigolier. That, I really like that move. Looking like dancing to get the pass over the shoulder of the defense. Beautiful lefty. Back and high release, straight in the hands of Salome Rollet for the break. Finally, France getting that break they need. It's not the only one they need, but this is already a good start from the Frenchies. 9-8, still in lead the Germans. 
But we do enjoy having some spiciness <laughs> with breaks from both sides. We just want the closest match yeah. possible. We don't care who wins this match. We just want to be entertained. Exactly. Give us some show. And are you not entertained? We saw so many of those wonderful high-release elevator flicks of the, out of the hands of the likes of Maël Barantin in the semi-final where we saw the French women surmount the Czech women. Of course, many of those Czech ladies playing for East Block this season with those fetching short shorts. But that's a lefty high release from Rigolier, who had a bit of a quiet semi-final, probably fair to say. Yeah, we haven't seen her much so far, but this is a good, very good way of getting out of such situation. Beautiful example from Rigolier. Well, still the facial expressions and body language a bit nervous for the French women as they go past our booth live here on this side with you, the best side of the pitch, obviously. Gurner putting one, a beautiful lead for Charles. Didn't have anything she liked the look of in the deep space, but clearly thought about it. Give and goes. Fabulous buzz switching, but hitting the break side to exploit it. Petit bon on Gerda. Like that matchup for sure. Parentin trying to best shell. That one for Keo. Getting great. High. Yep, great ups and read. Gurner now. Looking around, Charles just being aggressive with her movement in the backfield. <laughs> Layout grab from Anna Gurner, who I should say, to be fair, from a bid earlier on this tournament, has a swollen, bruised hand. So if she has any drops this game, which I don't think she has yet, that's her, that's her get out of jail card for that. Her disclaimer is that she's, and it is very, very swollen. Can confirm she was showing us at the party last night. Still playing like it ain't no thing. Shout going up line, casual toss from Kia Benavides and Volsen at the end of it all to punch the next in the scorecard for Germany women, double digit territory, 10. Eight. Casual toss, toss and casual assist. That looked so easy. Going out, getting out of the hands of Schall for the assist. She, she saw her teammate, knew what's coming up, and just an easy back and release. I mean, every time we say easy, it sounds like they're not working hard, but they are. And when I mean easy, it's just that it looks easy the way they are doing things. But that means they are putting even more effort for making it look easy. Mm -hmm. That is when you know someone is really good is when they are doing crazy stuff and it looks like it's, it's nothing like casual, as we we're saying. Like I could do that all day, every day. The that seamless execution of high difficulty rating efforts on the pitch but hats off by the way to Barantin and Petitbon who were being asked to mark Anna Gurner and Charlotte de Chal in that point because that is a really tough job and they did such a good job of it 20 passes required for that O-line hold making the German O-line work but they didn't know how to do that they're not scared of passes so now the response from the O-line of France. Vallée looking for Mondieu. A little bit high, but lets it sail over the head. Perfection on the read. Fabiquien lasers it, though. That's going to be into the hands of Mückstein. A squandered opportunity. <laughs> and Schuck getting low. Putting her oh. body on the line, trying to hit Nahes. That will come back in bounds. So the yards gained, but the point is not. Let's see again if the French O-line handling will give us a nice motion of the disc movement flow as it did previously. So that was really nice and showing us that they can do as well as the German handling system. Mondio striding forth. Gotta get out of this trap situation. Oh, looking dangerous on the run there was Shepper. 
Didn't quite take the aggressive line, just allowed the swing. Mon Dieu. This is really good matchups for the French women. Nullifying most of it, Le Bon with the layout. Both teams now really pressing each other to the very edges, the corners of their playbook. There's a gimme across, but Mondio decides to shoot a big flat backhand. Bobby Kian, perfection on the footwork. There's a pick call as we see San Marco with the backwards cap clutch that one, but uh, oh, I like that. Pick signal whilst holding the disc, I think, on the clenched fist. Not sure where the disc goes back. There seemed to be discussion whether it was called earlier and this should go back to in the hands of Mondio or stay in Babikian's possession. Well, it did seem like Babikian was the only person striking deep when the disc went up. So it is going to stay in the hands of Amon Babikian after that heroic footwork. So Babikian popping it back. Langlois, of course, wearing Elise Becker shirt. Hopefully that can inspire some extra legendary performances. Langlois is such a great player regardless. Oh, and she nearly gets the second attempt after the Michel block. Nahe swiping with those big, long arms. So brimful with talent. But oh. Valle blocks it back. Oh. <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> and so many great plays. So many bodies on that first shot on Longlois. Trying everything to get her hand on the disc. But then Vale with a big defense to retrieve the possession. Well, oh, man. This is a uh, quelle différence. Like, this is both teams <laughs> making each other look absolutely amazing. And we know they are, as we see Nahas go away to play defense against Nanu. Big backhand going into the end zone. Do they have the closing speed to prevent Nanu? No, oh! they do not. <laughs> the French women with a clutch grab. That was a valet point. She just did the defense layer to save the, 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 the possession and also the assist with a huge hug for Le Borgne to score their offense. Actually, so much intensity. We, I've lost track of who was on offense or defense, but oh my gosh, what a point. Well, a huge defensive stand for the French women's O-line. Coming out there, Chloe Vallée with a huge layout block. But uh, yeah, both teams really generating turns on each other. This is no sloppy business, not the kind of errors that we saw in the early section of the game. We have cleaned it up. It's polished almost to perfection at the moment. Our hearts go to the French women. We want them to get that one extra break because we want this one to go to universe. The people demand it, Charlotte. Exactly, and we're just one break away from France to get that tie game, to have a universe, whatever the score is. If they get to 14, good. If not, we will take whatever score, but just universe, please. We want this intensity. Also, big love to all of you watching right now live. We have reached 109 likes. Find that thumbs up button if you're enjoying this game, which we are. Help us rise up through the algorithmic business that is YouTube. And you only have 10 minutes left to hit the like button. I mean, you can do it afterwards as well, but even better live. <laughs> Absolutely. Gurner, far side. There's a bit of dancing around the back from Kyo Binavis, but all fine. That marked up excellently with Bertrand. That one, a lofty fade around. Germany women really being forced to throw the brakes. Johnson underneath there. Charles doesn't like the look of those. There's a pick call that's going to bring that one back into Charlotte Charles' possession, I'm pretty sure. 
Kyo Benavides exploding out of the stack. Sol is rising. I think it's been a while. Coming back at five, six. So not much time left to find a solution. Someone coming down from the stack probably. I mean, Shal looks a bit alone with the disc. Or just hit the hot button, <laughs> aim for Gerner. Charlotte Shal, flat one to Kyo. Of course, one stay, but ooh, high grab, but easy does it for Gerner's injured thumb. Shal. Fabulous footwork from Gerner, of course, World Games, busy season, doing the double-double. I think the knees might have been in bounds for that. We could watch that back for days, though. Lena von Stabu with a fabulous grab. Is there even a call on the field? Did anyone call out? Well, let's see. Mondio and uh, von Stabu will get a chance to chat yeah. about it. We're going to get a chance to watch it back. Problem is, she put her hand in front. Well, so we're going to watch it in winner's circle back. Maybe get a frame by frame if we can get our tech whirring. So here we go, a little choppy, but oh, that looks like it actually could be good. So, so close. We almost need a photo rather than video on that one. Maybe fairer just to send it back, Charlotte. What do you think? And if they call it out and Germany disagrees, yeah, just whatever you feel. Maybe she has no idea. I mean, she was so focused on layout. Well, either way, it looked very, very oh, cool. Oh, that, that, sorry, but <laughs> that was a hand <laughs> on the block. It, it made its way, that audio. That audio on that hand block actually came through and pierced through our cans in the commentary booth. That's how much of a piece Lena von Stabert just got on Mondeo's throw. She's got her mm. number. I mean, this is slicey so inside, big pressure, but well held. Good boxing. Second attempt, though. Can the French women do it? This to put them back even with the German women. We've got a power line out there because you want Mondio playing defense and then offense when you get your opportunity. And that's going to be the break back. We're on level in the gold medal match. Here it is, the break to tie the score 10 10 friends with the break and we get our closer game not to the universe yet but on good perspective oh wow Ooh. maybe that could be a pivotal call there's chat in the live chat from both sides of the fan <laughs> zone saying in or out? Was there a freeze frame somewhere if you can pause your stream? But would you want to pause this live action right now, Charlotte? I don't think so. But we are going to get a pause out there oh. on the field because the athletes have taken a time out. We will be back. Do not go anywhere. This gold medal match continues after this. on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. It is hot and spicy here in the women's gold medal match. Oh Charlotte! How are you feeling as a French fan right now? 
couldn't be better. I mean, this is so exciting to have a tie game. And yeah, okay, I have to say I am more for the French side than the German one. But still, I mean, if we get to universe point with a beautiful fight, like a hell of a fight, both teams getting the, the breaks and everything, and not just unfortunate errors, as we say, I mean, I would be just happy, even if France doesn't win. Whatever is the outcome, I want a good fight. And I think that is also what most of the crowd wants. Just give us a good show. Whoever Absolutely. wins. We, well, we've, we've reconfigured the format in these finals to ensure that we get those closing moments on a high energy finish. This game, of course, being played to 15 maximum points cap, but cap plus one when time expires. And we have about three minutes and change left on our game clock here. So all level. The Germans with the advantage. That advantage from, of course, winning the toss that they gave away at the start of this match. Fry. Big bomb. Kio Benavides underneath it. Has a little look and Ooh. can just commit so hard. Kio. This is crazy. Perfect for perfect run and a soft, uh, how do you say, amorti, like a... Uh, Softening from the cushion of Indeed. the poles. <laughs> Thankfully, Perfect. we're in a proper sports venue where the poles are covered in big foamy cushions because that could have ended in a really unpleasant way otherwise. But look at the presence of mind here. Binavis has a look. She sees that the pole is there. She thinks maybe I can do it, but what a hero. Great look, she had to focus on everything at the same time. The running, the disc, the defense coming, and the pulse. But all good. Oh, Ooh. we've had some we've had some frit wafted in front of us by the handsome frit. Stefan Rapazzo. The frit, the frit. <laughs> you can't come and call them chips here because they will think you mean crisps if you're British. But the uh, the chip van's been here. The Friet van. Friet is All a good option. Weekend. It's been a beautiful time. Salty goodness for the hard working athletes out here at Windmill. But we of course won't be taking any pause to eat food because no. right now we're on the edges of our benches. In fact we we've left the bench. We're now standing full stature. Because this game is hot as it gets. Low one into Chatra. This to level us back up at 11s. Ooh, oh, bit of a wobble on that, but well kept by Valet. And I'm having a wobble of my own. <laughs> Stefan Pazzo trying to get the best view up here in the booth with us. Shepherding, fixing problems, doing interviews. Chatrin, high one, Babiquian though with enough of a buffer from Fry. Such a dynamite play it in the end zone. Valet does not look the like of that cut from Mondio, who's going to throw a beautiful pass, but Kio Benavides on the block. Coming out of nowhere, number 89, Kyoko Benavides for the defense, crazy. No one saw that one coming. Oh, wow, what a vision, what a layout. She laid out, right? Yep, oh, she, yes. absolutely, she had to she hurl did. her tiny body at that one. Such an agile oh. athlete. But we talked about Amon Babikian being a stick of dynamite. Kia Benavides is a whole truckload of nitrous. So this for a break to retain that two-point advantage. Reobtain. A lot of poachers, players left alone, some places in the field. Oh, a little bit of a late bid and an injury. Heart and throat moments, Mona Shack there sort of just coming off the field of her own steam. So hopefully just a bit of winding. That is an interesting way to get out of field for an injury. I mean, I don't know what's happening, but... Oh, cramp. It really it's cramp. That's, that's why she can get up. That's pure cramp face. Oh. I think, I hope. Because she was running. 
Yeah, so if you can get up like that, it's probably, I don't know, maybe some sort of cramp or winding or something. But anyway, the medics will attend to her and the rest of her teammates. Of course, that's always one of the curious things when you have a teammate that falls during a big game. You have to put yourselves in that moment and think ahead of time how you are going to continue. So this point will continue. Valet with a casual low lefty grab. Looking very in control, very patient. But again, they throw that inside shot. I said patient. That wasn't. That is a face block. And a second injury. Really, Germans putting all their body, <laughs> whatever it takes to get a defense, to get a disc. Very strong inside side arm, right in the face. So Germany back with the break opportunity. France really struggling to get out. I mean, when they're in front of the end zone, the pressure is really big on the dump and they seem not to get that dump and then force some riskier passes. <laughs> that Germany knew how to defend. Kordalf gets hand blocked, but it's going to be redeemed by Shepper. Makes the adjustment. Schall. Low one to Gurner. Has Wallison in the back space. Petit Bon on the charge. She rises high but doesn't get the block. Wollison, Verena, Wollison, a little bit of a sky ball. Keo, of course. Binavis, a little spike on the back of it. But a clutch grab for Germany women. And that is indeed them re obtaining their two point lead over the French women. So two unanswered and then two in response. And Binvis got a first defense in the opposite end zone and ended up with the score as well. I don't know if we can call this a bookend if there was a turnover in between, but that was a full card for her. So Charlotte, we now deep diving into our stats of this game and massive shout out to Jamie Rabbits who was all over the dance floor last night. So we're not going to take a break because we're so close to the end of this game. So halftime, let's have a look at the depth of knowledge we've gotten right now. Germany women, five perfect O-line conversions. France women, two. How tired are their O-line going to be in the closing moments of this game? I think they already showed that they are pretty tired because they were struggling, as we were saying earlier, getting free from the stack, very big pressure, not so much movement coming from the stack, a lot of work on the handlers, even them, they are getting tired or the pressure of the defense is getting much to be because they are struggling to find the dumps. So let's see now what the O-line still has in store. So confirmed by our scorekeepers, it is going to be a game to 13. We are in the cap plus one situation. So this, to start us off, French women have 10 minutes of overtime in this match to try and grind themselves back into this game. But it all starts here, Valet. Just trying to grind up that line. It's a big shot over the top to Mondio. Both teams have been exploiting those over the top shots to the break side of the pitch exquisitely during this match. Chartrain, stall count rising, looking for that upline cut. Stall out what? the perfect defense of Germany women. That is denial. Okay, no time for frustration now. France needs to focus on the defense because Germans are willing to finish with this game for sure and score as fast as possible. So this is all about denial of the handler set and making sure you don't let anyone explode back. Raffenberg, <laughs> Florentine trying to... Nanu causes the confusion just flashing in front of the receiver. Good call from... LeBorn to put her body in the way because otherwise the read will be too easy for Raffenberg alone for that shot. No, put the pressure, show that you're going to put your body in there and pressure the reads. She had to cut short her run, which led to a turn. 
Mon Dieu. With the pressure of this game resting on her very broad, very strong shoulders. To Nanu. Le Bon. Someone's escaped their mark. And that's the number 16, Leo Raimondo. So there are opportunities available to exploit. The Germans trying to sag off into the deeper space. Valet. Wollison just hanging out, shepherding the back of the stack. There is a little threat developing. But all the attention and focus is on the handless space for both of these teams. Hammer over the top. Chatrin claims it easily. Not this so many options, but Chatrin managed to find someone. And c'est Fretigny coming out of the stack. Back up from Le Bon. Nanu now looking around, has a little bit of point and play. Throws the around. Bobby Kian gets picked off. That might be a catch up rather than a go back. I.e. the disc coming through. Although a stall out now being called by Inga Spanuk. So contested oh. stall out. I mean, that would, that would be a statement and a half if this was the second stall out in this point. Be a bit too much. So and there's always the upside option or a deep option at slow nine. <laughs> yes. The usual. Well, we've seen them get out of jail with a hammer. Maybe that might be the one we get. No, it's going to be a flick blade roll curving into the path of Chloe Vallée. All right, that's number one. Two blocks required of the French women, and they have to do it in about three minutes. What happens if we reach the 10 minutes? We have 10 minutes of overtime in finals for the team that are down to continue playing. We're looking to try and get you that championship clutch, that gold medal winning grab. Of course, windmill tournament. That is so stressful. Oh, I know. We only have 10 minutes. But it's better, it's better than that whole like business of if the scoreline is oh. a certain difference, the game is just dead. Definitely. Like, that's sad panda times. Definitely. So we've got to be breaking and we've got to be fast. So yeah, you better not. Yeah, because otherwise you can end up with games lasting as two games because the team is very far from Scoring that last one, but actually catching up, etc., etc. You know the song, the comebacks are real, <laughs> and you end up starting the next final one hour later. Yeah, <laughs> that is actually the reason why the format in Windmill is that kind of quirky game just expiring type business. It's because they had a women's final where it was a huge scoreline and it ran 45 minutes over time into the next final sort of spot, and people oh. were looking at watches being like, Folks, I got to get to Schiphol Airport. I have a flight to catch. Beep. <laughs> Players leaving the field. Indeed. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> the German women looking to fly their way to a windmill gold here. Fry back to Schall. It's, of course, a big power line. Gurner. Wollison underneath. He's been such a big threat in the deep space. This is a lovely movement. Now, Schall. Gurner. Stabut. Oh, Verena Vorsen is open for days. Look at that. It might come back on a travel call. No, it doesn't. It's going to be a windmill gold for Germany women. And what a way to finish. Exploded coverage. And, and that may will finish us off. Verena Vorsen. A power position. Perfect. Hug in the break, zone, break side, no defense to be seen. Germany finishing this with an amazing, clean offense. Great job. Great job also from France. Amazing final. The first final of windmill. Everybody getting emotional on the pitch. Germany fired up, celebrating day one. Windmill 2023 and France very disappointed from the results but I mean I guess they are happy of the job they've put on and it's only the beginning limbering to come.
Absolutely, Charlotte. And we will be there. Charlotte's emotions exploding alongside the cuts and the athletes here. We're going to get a winner's circle uh, interview with Anna Gurner, who will probably be feeling the vibes as well. But to shape this game out, that first break, the t attack from the French women was huge. But after that, it was Germany across the board. The clean holds of the German women, such a contrast against the French. They still only had two at the end of this game. Massive shout out to Jamie Rabbits, powering through the hangover from last night's party. And just the turnovers so even, the scoreline so close. This is gonna be a game to watch when these two rematch in Limerick, but we're gonna send you over to the winner's circle, folks. We have a whole separate live stream with interview action. Over to you, Steph. So if you're still watching this one, get yourself over to the Winner's Circle stream. Here with you, enjoying the scenes here all day long. Also, of course, two more finals until we wrap the affair up here at Windmill in Amsterdam. For myself, Hannah Pendlebury and Charlotte Terrasson, who's gone into a corner to feel her feelings somewhere. We have time slots for you. Two more finals to go. So local time here in Amsterdam, quarter to two for the Open Division and, of course, the biggest show here. Half past three for Mixed. Don't go anywhere. We'll be seeing you on the other side. Thanks. 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 Yeah, ultimate. Alti.tv. Nova, make your falling. The way my lips feel on your body. The way we're moving in the dark. With every breath we take, you're falling. Thank you. 